We need to face it, America has a big car problem. This is what the average road looks like in the United States in the current year. It is dominated by just massive, overly huge SUVs, trucks, and other military-grade vehicles. To give you guys some hard numbers here, the Toyota Camry from the 1980s to present increased in size by 21%. For SUVs, the Toyota RAV4 increased by an even larger 34%, and the trucks, the Ford F-150, increased by a quarter. And along with this increase in size, there has been an even bigger increase in price. This is the new vehicle average transaction price, and it's currently sitting at a ridiculous $50,000, and it's clearly not sustainable. But wait, it gets worse. Not only are cars across the board getting bigger, but Americans specifically are choosing the biggest kinds of cars available, namely trucks and SUVs. This data goes back to the 1970s, and back then, sedans, wagons dominated the car market, and there was a subgroup of pickup trucks. But over the years, SUVs, light trucks, have come to dominate the market, and smaller, more reasonable sedans only account for about 20% of the market, and quickly shrinking. So on top of all these models just getting bigger over time, people in the US are also choosing the biggest variants more and more. And unfortunately, bigger cars have huge downsides on a personal level. In terms of gas mileage, they consume much more gas than a smaller vehicle, increasing the carbon footprint and the price you pay for transportation. And don't forget, a bigger vehicle is going to cost substantially more in maintenance. The tires, for example, on an SUV are substantially larger than most sedans. So when it comes time to replace them, all four, you're gonna have to pay hundreds of additional dollars over a smaller car. So today I wanna to try and find out why the US is on this unsustainable trend of bigger, more expensive, more inefficient cars when the rest of the world is going in the opposite direction. So the first layer of all this is consumer preferences. People in the US just want larger vehicles. And a major reason they say they want larger vehicles is the safety factor. They feel that the bigger the car they're in, the more safe they are on the road. Now the data does not back this up. For example, an SUV is much more likely than a sedan to roll over in an accident. Also, the more mass a vehicle has in a crash, the more violent it's gonna be for everybody involved. But even aside from that, this whole logic of buying a bigger car to feel safer on a road full of big vehicles, it becomes this positive feedback loop that forces you to buy ever increasing car sizes to be competitive with other cars on the road. And unfortunately, bigger cars kill more people, especially children. And this is for a lot of reasons. Mobility, a bigger car is harder to maneuver, it also takes longer to stop, there's more blind spots, but yet it appears people are willing to pay the ever-increasing price for these massive cars, and right now we have these as the top sellers in the US. And it's dominated by huge trucks and SUVs. And just to prove that it doesn't have to be this way, this right here is one of the leading sellers in China. It's a small, compact EV with 250 miles of range that cost $11,000. And these cars are better than a Chevy Silverado in essentially every single way possible. It's easier on your wallet, cheaper to maintain, environmentally friendly, and safer for pedestrians and other drivers alike. To give you guys more data on this, these are the top 10 selling models in China as of I think last year. Tesla is pretty popular in China right now, but this one from BYD, the Quinn Plus, begins at $18,900 and it's a plug-in hybrid car. And putting this second best-selling car in China against the second best-selling car in America right now, the Ford F-150, the difference is just massive and there's no reason why Americans should be buying these cars. Now, one of the reasons why we have this discrepancy has to do with the price of gasoline. So this right here shows us the average price worldwide for a gallon of gas. And you're gonna notice that the United States, at least in terms of developed nations, has the lowest gas prices. And that's because of government subsidies. Fossil fuels, unfortunately, are heavily, heavily subsidized by the taxpayer in the US, even up until the present day. So even though SUVs are significantly less fuel efficient than smaller cars, this difference in fuel prices 
helps to account for why Americans opt for these massive inefficient cars versus the decision other regions make in their cars when gas prices aren't as heavily subsidized. Another reason we don't have many, or excuse me, any cheap compact electric vehicles has to do with the production of lithium ion batteries. It's currently dominated by China. In 2022, China accounted for 77% of the capacity of batteries produced. And the implications of this data means that the US simply doesn't have as many companies that can produce the parts needed for homegrown electric vehicles. So the domestic EV market needs to develop, have a lot more competition before we see vehicles that are this cheap. Okay, so if we can't produce them domestically, why not just import them? Why is this not currently for sale in the United States? Well, this leads me to the third final reason, and that is the geopolitical tension between the US and China right now. So the US recently passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which had a lot of incentives for domestic EV production. This is the program that gives you that $7,500 EV tax credit you might have heard of, but in order to qualify for that tax credit, lots of different requirements need to be met, mostly having parts sourced and assembled in the United States. There's also big tariffs for importing foreign cars and trucks. And the whole reason why we still have some competitive foreign companies selling cars in the US market is because they set up manufacturing in the United States. And I just don't think BYD is going to build a factory in the US anytime soon. So that's why America is in a rather unique position of having these massive cars dominating roadways. A big portion of it does have to do with consumer taste and preferences. Americans just have this weird affinity for having overly huge cars, but there are other factors that affect this, like subsidized fossil fuels. Another factor is just the underdevelopment of battery production and EV making here in the United States. And then the third reason is just geopolitical. So even though there are cheaper cars out there made by foreign companies, due to protectionism, tariffs, tax incentives, we do not see them on American roadways. But if you don't believe me, take it from this random guy on Reddit. His response to why there are no cheap compact EVs produced in America right now is because compact cars just don't sell especially well in the US market. And on top of that, the EV market in the United States is still in its infancy. Most companies are just now introducing their first or second electric vehicle model. And whenever something is new, companies tend to focus on the larger, more profitable segments before moving to smaller, affordable options. That's why right now in the United States, one of the few EVs in the market is a ridiculous electric Hummer that begins at $108,000. Meanwhile, in China, you can buy this compact EV for $5,000. I will say, given enough time, the US EV market will develop to the point that they can profitably produce vehicles like this. But the only remaining question is, will Americans buy them? Or will they still opt for massive trucks that cost $100,000 instead? That remains to be answered. But that's it for this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.